You're listening to Greater Good Radio Hawaii. Please visit us online at greatergoodradio.com. Today's guest is Gene Higgins, film and TV producer responsible for overseeing the production of more than $500 million in motion picture and television projects. Gene has worked in 27 foreign countries and most major cities and states of the U.S. How did you end up in Hawaii after all of these different positions and, and traveling the world? I had heard the studio had a show going to Hawaii. So I called a production executive that I knew over there, and I said, I hear you've got a show going to Hawaii. I need to be on it. And she goes, oh, no, we're not. I said, oh, believe me, you do. You just haven't announced it yet, but you do. So she says, ah, oh, I guess we better go to lunch. So it was one of those business lunches. And she set it up. I went. She set up a meeting with J.J. Abrams, who was the creator of the show, and Sarah Kaplan, who was J.J.'s producer. They had been working together on Alias, and this was sort of an offshoot of Alias. I had a meeting with them, and it went well. So did you just call them, or did you already have a relationship established? Did they know your background, your history? I had a relationship with Disney, the studio, where I had done a number of movies of the week. I had just finished doing half a season of a show called Line of Fire, and... I used to drop in periodically and do movies of the week with them. I would do a pilot with them. But, you know, we're all freelance. We all work freelance. So rarely are you ever on staff in our business. Is this the first time you've worked in Hawaii? Yes, although I was dying to come back. I mean, I came over here and surfed when I was 13. And then I came back and spent the summer when I was 16. So it's always been, how do I get back there? What, what's your take on it? Because you've traveled all over the world, you've shot movies, you've been in business all over the world. What's your take on Hawaii and doing business here and shooting here? And the, you know, What's it like for someone not from here? Doing business in Hawaii, I think, is very interesting. First of all, it's great fun. It's nice. I'm enjoying the heck out of myself. It's, it's interesting to be in a culture that is, that is part, the United Sta- part of the United States. And yet, to me, as an outsider looking at it, it looks much more to the east than it does to the mainland. And personally, I find that very interesting and very energizing and very new and different and a lot of fun. It's very interesting to me. The studio's take on it is that I keep telling them, no, we have to do business slightly differently here. You know, you have to come over and, frankly, think more Asian, which is not a bad thing. It's just a different thing. You know, but then if you go to Italy, you have to think Italian. So what's the difference? So how is that as a producer? Because you're traveling, you're promoting different, I guess, shows or movies or television shows that you're doing. How is it to learn the different cultures and be okay with where you're at? To me, it's fascinating. I mean, when I first started out after I got that little PA job, uh, I started doing documentaries. So three of us used to travel all over the world and do these corporately sponsored documentaries which was, for me, sort of join the film business, see the world. So early, early on, I was immersed in, okay, we're three days in Africa, and then we fly to Brazil, and we're three days in Brazil, and then let's go to Japan, and then let's go to Australia. So you learned early on to be very flexible and very adaptable. And then how did you learn the business side, or did you always kind of have that knack for the business side? I have a knack for numbers, it, and it's something I just inherited from my father. I can't really explain it. I remember numbers. It makes makes the studio a little nervous because I know exactly where I am, but it will take the accountant three days on paper to justify it. But it's always there. So it's it makes that part of my job for me easier because to me the more interesting side of it is the creative side, and yet you have to completely support it with absolutely solid production, solid numbers. I mean, I can safely say that Lost is on budget, and um, we don't go over. And that's the best way to earn your freedom, isn't it, is to do a good job. How, how do you know when you have a hit on your hands before you actually get ratings back and all that? Do you get a certain feeling? Have you been right all the time? Are you wrong sometimes? How, how do you know that? Usually I'm pretty right. I mean, very honestly, working freelance, you want to do the shows that you want to do, but then, of course, there's times that you just need to do a show. I sort of divide it up into mortgage payments and art. You know, it's 90% mortgage payments, so you can afford to do the 10% art. Um, This show, the minute JJ told me what the concept of the show was, I went, oh, 
It's it's a total solid hit. But I think you have to look at the project in terms, especially television, in terms of what's going on economically currently, what is the political situation currently. I mean, if you look at Lost, Lost is wonderful escapist entertainment. If you compare that to sort of the social milieu and the economy that's going on right now, it's not all that wonderful. People want escapism. You go back to the Clinton era when the economy was great. What were the shows that were hits? Shows that were about everybody's problems. Right now, everybody has enough of their own problems. They don't want to look at more. I mean, go all the way back to the 70s and the Vietnam era. If you track what was the hit show, it was laugh-in. You know, life was terrible. The show, they want escapism. Lost is the perfect show for the time. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more on Greater Good Radio.